So uh, I'm here to talk about the I-74 Mississippi River Bridge um, connecting Iowa and Illinois in Quad Cities metropolitan area. Uh, the project duration was 2017 through 2021. And uh, if anybody's not familiar, this is where uh, the Quad Cities is. Uh, the I-74 bridge is kind of the main artery of transportation in the middle of the metropolitan area. And the, as you can see the, on the picture there, and there's an artist rendering of the bridge before construction. Um, an overview of the project, there were nine contracts, uh, five major prime contracts, 15 different concrete contractors on the job, 44 mixed designs. We alone supplied 216,311 and a cube, uh, quarter cubic yards. There's about another 40,000 of, of paving supplied by others uh, on, on a paving part of the project. The whole corridor was about a, a billion dollars in total costs when you count in the pre-construction and demolition portions uh, of the old project, or the old bridge. Here are some of the project partners, the Iowa and Illinois DOT, contractors, architects, and engineers. Uh, this is a great, uh, I love this slide here. Everything in red were bridges. Everything in yellow is interstate on-grade paving, and orange is local roads that were all part of the project that were done concurrently. And it actually extends beyond the, the edge of the, uh, this picture. So the existing I-74 bridge was a um, twin suspension bridges with two lanes each direction and literally no shoulder. So incredible amounts of traffic and, uh, and issues if there was like an accident or something. Um, so the new structure uh, is twin true arch bridges, four lanes each direction with two shoulders each way, a total of 72 foot deck width and a 14 foot bike path um, on, on the one side. So a true arch bridge, uh, most arch bridges are tight arch bridges where it is a, a closed circuit of force and the concrete piers below just hold up the weight. This bridge was a true arch bridge which exerts an incredible amount of force downward and outward on the concrete elements. So those concrete elements need to be incredibly strong and incredibly massive to take that force. Uh, some of the unique challenges on this job, so there are three endangered mussel species that live in those red areas there. Um, so a large uh, mussel relocation effort was uh, started before the project, and if you can see the yellow bars there around the, the, the project, that was actually the only working space the contractor had. So they're incredibly uh, tight confines to work in. And we also had a 100-year flood through the project, so you can see some pictures of the, the whole project kind of underwater. That's what a pier normally looks like. That's what it looked like during the flood. So um, that was fun. <laughs> One, <laughs> it, it, it really uh, makes you nervous when they say, we're still going to take trucks out on the river, but we're going to flood the barge 75% with water to get out there. And you're like, oh, we're going to put trucks on a flooded bar. OK. Uh, everything had to get out to the job, people and materials through boat or barge. Um, the, we had to take barges out around a wing dam. So sometimes the concrete was as, as old as two hours after batching before it arrived on site. And we, we kind of landed on four trucks per barge is the perfect uh, amount of trucks to put on there. That could get us about 50 to 60 yards per hour if we did it right. So we were not breaking any speed records with this. Uh, but we would pull up to a pump on another barge, um, and that was how we did most of the placements. We also worked throughout the year, so um, we also we served as an icebreaker a lot of times in the Mississippi, as you can see here. So, kind of neat. Uh, pumping was a challenge. Uh, pumping was a challenge. Oftentimes we'd get out to the job site and we on a barge for two hours, and we'd have a nice boom pump with this, and we'd have a Z-boom pump. And so air loss was different, uh, uh, slump loss was different, um, so that was a challenge. And sometimes we did pump to pump to pump, as you can see here, uh, three pumps. Uh, most of the elements on this job, all the columns, the footings, the piers, were all mass concrete, and we were subject to mass concrete specifications. So. Uh, we had both a differential between the interior and exterior faces of the concrete um, that had to be, you know, within certain limits at certain times, and the internal curing temperature couldn't exceed 160 degrees. There's no cooling tubes used on this project, so we uh, were able to accomplish this by using 70% slag uh, mixed designs and dropping the initial concrete temperature with liquid nitrogen. 
So we did that two different ways. Liquid nitrogen was a, um, an interesting uh, learning experience. So we did started with uh, the, the uh, Lance method, where you put nitrogen directly into the back of the truck, um, which had incredible cooling capacity, but uh, very, very slow, took an immense amount of nitrogen that was um, a, hu a huge risk for us that we would run out of nitrogen during a pour. And then we switched to a method using uh, nitrogen hitting the feed belt on the plant. That was much more efficient use of nitrogen uh, and much quicker, uh, but brought its own issues. But I think I have a video here. This is the Lance method. And that's the uh, method. Uh, definitely the most difficult part of, pro pro concrete part of this uh, project was the arch ribs. So all of the columns and arch ribs uh, were all mass concrete, but also self-consolidating concrete. So the dichotomy of, of trying to have less paste, less cementitious material in mass concrete, and then more to make a self-consolidating uh, concrete was very difficult. Um, and these were large, these arch ribs were large enough that we were really constrained by nitrogen. I mean, we had to get the concrete had to be on site below 55 degrees. So that means we were dropping it to 45 degrees with nitrogen uh, in the middle of summer and then putting it on a barge. Um, so arch ribs were very difficult. So we came up with a, uh, a kind of a custom self-consolidating mix for these mass concrete placements. It's lean, 675 pounds, cementitious, 70% slag, 5.5 um, to 8.5% air. Like I said earlier, max 55 degrees at placement. And so we hit it with nitrogen, put it on a barge for two hours, pump it. At the end of the pump, we had a two-inch spread window, a 3% air window, um, and placement sizes up to 850 cubic yards. We needed 7,500 PSI on this mixed design and often got 9,000 to 12,000 PSI. This is kind of fun. We kind of went concrete viral. Uh, we put this on our Facebook, and we had 40,000 views on Facebook, which is about as good as you get in this industry, I think. Um, so uh, we had some decorative blue concrete for uh, an overlook section there on the bike path. That was kind of cool. That was a very expensive color that came out of uh, a mine in South Africa, uh, actually. So it was neat. Here's a picture, uh, close to substantial completion of the bridge, pro uh, the bridge portion of the project over water, and a larger view of the whole corridor. It actually does extend even further off, but uh, it's just pavement off beyond that. So, um, and here's a little video. Of it. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is mass concrete placements. Um, the loose dimension on 27 feet, uh, is 2,500 cubic yards, uh, again, 50 to 60 yards. So, um, that is all I have. So, uh, any, uh, any questions?